on December 12, 1933, the week after being awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics along with Schrödinger, Paul Dirac did a presentation on the theory of electrons and positrons, during which he explained how quantum mechanics and relativity made possible the prediction of the positron. Dirac hinted that the universe could consist of equal amounts of matter and antimatter. However, for some unknown reason, human experience is confined almost entirely to matter. This clear bias is known as the Baryon asymmetry of the universe. So, what happened? Where's antimatter? Hi, my name is Ricardo Miguel and I'm a master's student of engineering physics at Instituto Superior Técnico. During this video, I want to talk about some of the main topics of my thesis. First, the standard model. The standard model reunites our present knowledge of the fundamental constituents of matter and their interactions. Essentially, it gives us the building blocks of which all matter structures in the universe are made of. Those elementary blocks are three generations of quarks and leptons, also known as fermions, and the mediators of their interactions, the bosons. As the name implies, the electroweak force is a unified description of the electromagnetic and weak forces. Together with the strong force, they constitute three of the four fundamental forces of nature. The standard model is also what is called a chiral theory, where the fermion fields can be split into their left and the right-handed components. But how do we organize this bundle of fields? In order to correctly explain the inner workings of nature, it is very convenient to organize them according to how they transform under electroweak interactions. We have weak isospin doublets for left-handed fields, while right-handed fields are weak isospin singlets. But something is amiss. No right-handed neutrinos were ever found in nature, and for that reason, they are not taken into account within the standard model. For a long time, neutrinos were thought to be massless, but after the discovery of neutrino oscillations, we know that's no longer the case, despite being extremely light when compared with the other fermions. The neutrino states of definite mass, mu1, 2 and 3, can be written as linear combinations of neutrino states with definite flavor, electron, muon and tau neutrinos. One of several mechanisms proposed to explain why neutrino masses happen to be so small when compared to other particles is the seesaw mechanism of type 1 where we introduce the missing heavy right-handed neutrinos, which will suppress the mass of the light neutrinos. In other words, the larger the mass of the new heavy particles, the smaller is the mass of the light ones. But there's one thing that makes the neutrinos truly special. In 1937, Ettore Majorana described the type of particle which is its own antiparticle, and neutrinos are the only fermions which can be Majorana particles. This has very important implications for what comes next. One might think that there was some primordial accidental matter antimatter imbalance right after the Big Bang, but the inflationary scenario of the universe eliminates that possibility. On the other hand, how do we account for a dynamic generation of the asymmetry? This kind of scenario goes by the name of baryogenesis. Several new mechanisms of baryogenesis have been put forth, but a particularly interesting class of scenarios is the so-called leptogenesis, first proposed by Fukugita and Yanagida in 86. They suggest a model in which out of equilibrium decays of heavy Majorana neutrinos generate a lepton asymmetry. Due to their Majorana natures, they may decay into leptons or antileptons. This lepton asymmetry is then partially converted into a baryon asymmetry by processes called sphalerons. All in all, leptogenesis is a competition between processes that create or eliminate the observed asymmetry. And so, if the rates at which all processes occur drop out of equilibrium, a baryon asymmetry in favor of matter may yet survive. The mechanism of baryogenesis via leptogenesis 
acquired a continuously increasing popularity, since it connects two mysteries at the same time, the Baryon asymmetry of the universe and the origin of neutrino masses. The goal of my thesis is to build a model based on modular symmetries and to study the viability of leptogenesis. Thank you for watching.